Hi, everyone. Um, I'd like to just start off by thanking um, Lanpo Vekplat and Senves for this incredible opportunity. It's been wonderful to hear what everybody's got to say. And now I've got a little story to share with you. Um, Future Farmers started out some 15 years ago now, and I was at a youth show, and I was speaking to some children from Zaki Agricultural School. And these young boys had actually made it to the youth show nationals. They were so good and they were so passionate about their animals. And I said to them, what does the future hold for you? Are you going to university or to Sadara next year when you matriculate? And they said, no, we're not. Um, we haven't got money. We haven't got the right subject at school. Um, we can't get into those institutions. And I said, well, then will you start working on farms? And they said, Judy, do you know what? We school leavers. We're unemployable. No one will take us. And I was brought face to face with a reality that I hadn't ever thought about before, to be honest. And I said to them, guys, you've got passion, and I know farmers. And I started going around to farmers and saying, please take on an appy. He's passionate about farming. That's what's going to make him different. Take him on at minimum wage and give him the opportunity to learn. You don't have to teach him. He's going to learn. He's going to take knowledge from you and from your fellow workers. I found three farmers. I must say I found another 20 or 30 who thought it was a very bad idea. But um, <laughs> one of the lads I sent to... I'm very keen on young people going overseas because I think to escape from South Africa, well, not to escape from us, just to get away from us for a year, learn something about the world at large, um, is, it's, it's, it's an incredible thing. And this young lad went to a farm in Germany. I found a German farmer who was prepared to fund him. And... It was a dairy farm, because I only knew dairy farmers back then. And he phoned me after about a week, and he said, Judy, there are no workers. And the problem was that it was a dairy farm, and he and his boss ran that dairy farm, and his boss was the local mayor as well. Um, that lad did so well that they actually extended his visa and later on, his German employer came to visit him in South Africa, but he ended up with no tertiary education, managing um, a whole sound area of over a thousand cows. So this is what can happen. And the, the big thing is for us, well, what happened, I wasn't starting an organization, I was helping three kids. The next year, their friends phoned me. And the year after that, more phoned me. Um, and after a couple of years, well, I had to close down my dairy because I couldn't do both. And we at Future Farmers are incredibly privileged because these young people seek us. They've come to us from every province in the country. They've hitched hiked. They've hitchhiked from Cape Town to Howick, not for a job, just to get an interview to join future farmers. Can that person fail when you place them on a farm? So we are all about passion. Do you love farming? And I say to them, what is your dream job? What do you really want to do? Oh, no, I love agriculture. No, no, what do you want to do? Livestock. Yeah, but do you love chickens or pigs, or do you want to milk cows, or do you want to work with beef cows? Oh, no, I love chickens. And, you know, my grandma did this, and, you know, I milked my dad's cows in the morning before I went to school. These are the people that we need on our farms. It's incredible, the potential they've got, the 
They, they are so smart, and there are so many of them. Um, we've got a young lad who, who's, who's done a platform uh, for the Sanic, um, Sadev uh, farmers. And he's, it's a farming platform for them. And he's got no tertiary education, but he's good with technology. So it it's starts with an apprenticeship on, our, on a farm. And to the farmers, I have to thank you because you are key to our success. You are our partners. You are half of future farmers. You give these young people an opportunity to come and work on your farms and to learn. We support them with mentorship. So many of our mentors, by the way, are older future farmers who have been through the process and now have come back to us and said, we want to help. Um, that mentor speaks to the farmer every month. How is Sufiso doing? Then he phones Sufiso or visits him and says, how are you getting on? And if he's got any problems, we don't go to the farmer and say, oh, he's got a problem, please sort it out. We tell Sufiso, look, this is how you need to approach and tackle this problem. We create opportunities. We don't do anything for them. So even with the overseas internships, we've got some amazing sponsors who have given us funding to send them overseas. We send them overseas. They, they go to a job. They're getting paid in dollars or euros or whatever, is, whatever the going rate is. But whatever it is, it's big compared to what they've ever had here in South Africa. They pay us back. So they get an interest-free loan. Over a period of three, four, maybe five months, they pay us back half of their salary that they're earning overseas. As soon as we get that money back, we send the next person. So this one little piece of money that a, a sponsor gave us is still busy three, four, five years later sending people overseas. We have, um, we had a fantastic story. We've, we've actually had many stories. You can see this lad here riding a bull in Australia. You can imagine when I saw that photograph, I nearly had heart failure because I thought, you know, We've supplied you with health insurance, but is it gonna cover this? Um, and then he comes back home and I say to him, what were you doing? And he said, winning money. Um, but but um, really, you know, just one example was a girl, uh, 22, 23. Um, she was working in a poultry operation big poultry operation, she was a poultry worker. That means she's invisible. She's got no chance of promotion. Um, she's not going anywhere, but she loves chickens. We send her to the United States. She goes out to the Midwest to a huge um, egg production operation. It was a little bit like um, rainbow chickens, but for eggs, farms all over the place. They give her a unit of half a million layers to manage, and she breaks the company production record. Um, she came back here to a job as a farm manager, but what changed? She had self-esteem. When she walks into our office, she walks differently, she speaks differently, she engages and she's got self-esteem. She knows what she can do. So please, people, we, oh, by the way, we've got a, a, a Future Ready program as well that we, we support them with. It teaches them about basic life skills. What does your employer expect from you? You know, when you start working, the least you need to know is what do they expect? But please, we would like to work with anyone who shares our values. If we can add a little bit of value to a program that you are doing, or if you feel you can add a bit of value to what we are doing, we would like to work with you. And don't hesitate to speak to us. We want to be much bigger than we are. 
Thank you very much, and thanks again to, uh, uh, to Lanpo, and thank you very much for having me.